Hi, it's Kristen here at UT Southwestern Medical Center. Thank you for joining our Facebook live chat on surgical treatment options for back pain. We're thrilled to be joined by Douglas, Dr. Douglas Dixon with the Peter O'Donnell Jr. Brain Institute here at UT Southwestern. Dr. Dixon is an orthopedic surgeon who specializes in complex spine surgery and is also an assistant professor in the Department of Orthopedic Surgery. So as usual, you know, this cannot replace a, an appointment with your physician, but we'll certainly take it. So go ahead and start submitting those now. In the meantime, you know, thank you for joining us, Dr. Dixon. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it should be a really fascinating conversation. Yes. So let's start with something simple. What, what seems simple. <laughs> what can cause back pain? Well, there are several causes of non-spine related back pain issues. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. number one could be anything in your digestive system, so okay. let's say you have a kid with like a gallstones can cause mm -hmm. back pain. Mm -hmm. um, also, when you have a, okay. also you can have some muscular causes of back pain that is you have like a strained muscle strain. Okay. It normally happens when people engage in a lot of physical activity and um, has an acute onset of back pain. Mm -hmm. So these are all some of the causes of back pain. Okay, and also sometimes you can have what we call metastasis means cancer that moves from one part of your body into your spine mm -hmm. can also lead to back pain. Okay, so there's a lot of different, a lot of different reasons there. How common is this? So for the general back pain, fifty-five. Okay, mm -hmm. but for the non-spinal cause of back pain, it's all related. It's less common than the more muscular type and more spinal causes of back pain. Okay. Good to know. So is age a factor in when you experience back pain? Yes. Um, the prevalence, like I said, increases from 35 to 55, but age is a significant factor because okay. sometimes you may have like a degenerative disease that is related to age. Degenerative mm -hmm. disease means your disc breaks down and it's an arthritic condition. Let's we'll show a little bit of yes. it. We can pull it up, make sure it's in the, the camera. Right. So this is, um, this is the spine and um, the bones are the vertebral column and in between the bones are the discs and the yellow portion here is the nerve so in a degenerative condition the disc breaks down when the disc breaks down they get closer to the nerve when they get closer to the nerve this yellow component here they irritate the disc irritates the nerve related to the nerve okay and that also is a cause of low back pain Okay, good to know. So we're starting to get some questions in. I'm so glad you brought this. So the first question is from Charlene, and it is, you know, can exercise help reduce back pain? If so, what types are? If it's muscle related, okay. Mm -hmm. it also, the muscle helps build, the exercise helps build your core strength. So that type of back pain that's muscle related gets better with exercise. Mm -hmm. Okay, but the not but the structural causes of back pain related to the spine may not get better with back pain, uh, with exercise, especially if it's related to the disc and the disc is pushing right on the nerve because that's a structural pathology that needs to be treated. Okay, so is that a case where it might lead to requiring surgery? Yes, that might be a case that might lead to requiring surgery, but we don't just go right into surgery. There's other non-surgical treatments of back pain. We most likely in our spine center here, we always try to try the non-surgical treatments first. Okay. And some of the non-surgical treatments could be physical therapy to help you strength, strengthen your core, or also injections. Most common is that what we call the transforaminal epidural steroid injection. It means we put some steroids around the nerve root that is inflamed and irritated by the disc. Mm -hmm. And that leads to decreased inflammation. Marianne, and it's related to scoliosis, which we touched on briefly before, which is there's scoliosis in a 60 year old female surgery with DDD. Mm -hmm. I think who is qualified to, to treat that? Well, scoliosis, um, whoever is qualified to treat scoliosis is the person who's trained in scoliosis treatment. Okay. Not every spine surgeon has really had intense or great fellowship in scoliosis treatment. So mm -hmm. it could be an orthopedic surgeon or it could be back pain. So I have a caveat that I tell most of my patients. If your back pain is activity related and when you stop the activity, the back pain goes away in about 72 hours, then 
it's less likely that you need to call the doctor right away. But if your back pain is related to pain that runs down your leg and also causes significant weakness and changing your neurologic status, then these are things that you really need to call your doctor. Okay, good to know. So we have a question here from Dr. Sala, and his question is, what's the causes or risk factors for disc prolapse in young people? Well, the causes of disc prolapse, which is disc degeneration in young people, number one, if the younger patient smokes, and it's across the board, if you smoke, but there's an ink, if you smoke nicotine, nicotine cuts the black supply to the disc and leads to more degeneration. So one of the risk factors is smoking. Also weight, weight gain, okay? And we've known that the more weight you put on your spine, the more your disc can degenerate, mm -hmm. okay? There may be some genetic components to disc degeneration as well, mm -hmm. which it's, it's genetic, so there's not much you can do to modify. So these are kind of the three okay. um, risk factors that can help a, can cause a younger patient to have this prolapse. Okay, good to know. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Sella. Um, what about when is back surgery recommended or spine surgery? Spine surgery is recommended, especially when the patient has exhausted all conservative conservative treatment, meaning non-surgical treatment, so physical therapy, injections and also on the diagnostic studies like an MRI matches with the patient's symptomatology. Okay. okay. If you can match the MRI findings to the patient's symptomatology, there's a higher likelihood you can offer surgery and offer um, treatment uh, improvement for the patient. The patient can get relief from the back symptomatology. Okay. So I always wanna look at those factors okay. first before we proceed with any surgery. Yes, some people may have back pain, but the diagnostic findings does not correlate with the symptomatology. Those are the people that we don't normally, we will not offer surgery as a treatment. Okay, so for those that don't, they can have injections. Sometimes they can have some facet injections. So injections, the facet is the joints behind the the spine right over here. Sometimes they get arthritic, they break down as well. In addition to the disc. Mm -hmm. So we can put, we can recommend some injections to be placed at these facets, these joints in the back. That could also help with back pain. So these are some of the conditions. And also, there's, we, there's been studies that sometimes support what we call a spinal cord stimulator. Mm -hmm. Okay, that you, it's kind of like, a, I call it like a pacemaker of the heart, but also oh. it goes at the back, right around the some nerves. And that could also be used to help treating back pain as well. Interesting. All right. So what are the potential risks with spine surgery? I know there, there are always risks with any surgery, but are there some that are unique to spine surgery? Right. One of the most unique complications related to spine surgery is paralysis. Paralysis mm -hmm. can happen. And also weakness from any muscle group or damage to the nerve. Okay. okay. All these depends on the complexity of the surgeon of the other surgery that you're performing. Mm -hmm. It's about one one to two percent, okay? But these are kind of the most peculiar complications related to spine surgery. With all other type of surgeries, there could be risk of infection, okay? Yeah. Let's get that general surgery, any other surgery. And also, you can have what we call a CSF leak. Around the spinal cord, mm -hmm. you have this yellow substance, you have what we call the dura. The dura is a sac around the spinal cord and also the nerves. Sometimes when you're doing surgery, the dura could get poked or I'll say ruptured, and sometimes you need to fix it if you see it. Mm -hmm. okay. The flow, the CSF fluid, is the fluid that bathes the nerve root and the spinal cord, and you got to close that dura so the CSF leak goes away. So that could happen. These are specific complications related to spine surgery. Okay, good to know. Great questions, everybody. So we are. All of us, we have about five, six more minutes for questions. So if you have any last minute ones, please get them in now for Dr. Dixon. You know, we talked about the risks. Obviously there are benefits. You know, how do you determine whether someone is a good candidate for surgery? Yes, so you, we do a total assessment of the patient. Okay, meaning we look at pathology, also we look at the treatment options, what treatment options has helped. Mm -hmm. One key thing is, if the non-surgical treatments even give you some form of improvement, mm -hmm. especially the injections, 
let's say we put the injections at the L5S1 level and you have significant improvement. And with time, you, the efficacy decreased significantly. We know that if we work at that level, that could give you a significant relief. And also, I stated that if we look, if we compare the MRI to the symptomatology, mm -hmm. and there's a big correlation as well, you have a higher um, probability of getting relief from spine surgery. Okay, good to know. So we've got a question in from Christy, and that is, what types of exercises should be avoided for people with back pain? So what I tell most people is to try not to do any significant bending. Okay, so people in back pain, let's say gym, like excessive lunges. You can do lunge, but lunges with weights. Okay. okay. And excessive twisting and turning as well. Okay. Because that loads your facets significantly. That's okay. conjointing the back. Okay. That makes something like CrossFit pretty hard. Yes. Something, yeah, you're right. Something like CrossFit makes it pretty hard. And also... Um, like squats that people put weights okay. around the shoulder. Mm -hmm. Yes, that also puts excessive pressure on the facet joint in the back. And okay. that affects. Okay, no CrossFit for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank, that's, that's a very common question. I'm glad we were able to address it. Thank you for the question, Christy. You know, so. It's cover spine surgery. Okay, and um, so it's not some. It's, it's some. And just like you mentioned, the financial aspect, you know, low back pain affects the almost about 80% of the people in the in, in our population. And it costs the healthcare dollars about 100 billion US dollars to treat every year. Mm -hmm. So yes, there's a fi financial repercussion on back pain, but also, like I said, insurance companies also take will pay for that. It's a great story though. Um, the third year in medical school, I didn't know what I was gonna do. Mm -hmm. I was torn between orthopedic surgery and neurosurgery. So I had to make a choice, you know, and I tell people, you know, I prayed about it, you know, and I met a physician that did orthopedic surgery and I did a rotation with an orthopedic surgeon in New York okay. and I loved it, you know. Then later I came to learn about orthopedic surgery and I found that orthopedic surgery is the killing the patient. That's, that's great. That is a good story. So we do have time for about two more questions here and we've got one from Lori. And her question is, would you recommend, recommend patients receive a second opinion before going into surgery? Absolutely. I always recommend a second opinion. Here we see multiple, I even see third opinions, you know, because I do believe we're all surgeons, we all have a different treatment modalities. But the more surgeons you have looking at your case, the better it is to make a great, you know, decision in going to surgery. Okay. And we are more than happy to see anybody who wants even a fourth opinion, that's mm -hmm. fine. It's your spine, so you want the best opinion out there. So I will even recommend you get a multiple opinions and making a decision based on that. Okay, good to know. Great question, Lori. Last question, this one came in from Christy, and that is, if you have a first surgery, are you more likely to need additional surgeries later on? It depends on what type of surgery that was done. Mm -hmm. If it's a fusion, meaning you put some instrumentation. There are studies that shows that you may have a risk of a strong probability of needing a second surgery, but not every fusion patient needs a second surgery. Okay, all right, great, quick, great question, Christy. All right, one more question, then we're gonna let Dr. Dixon go back to his day job. But this one comes in from Daniel, and what are the common causes of back sprain and how best to treat that? One of the common causes of back sprain is um, excessive physical activity that could lead to that. The best way to treat that is to precondition yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, you prepare your muscles for that excessive physical activity. So for example, somebody who's not been working out in the gym just goes into the gym the first day, wants to do almost everything that people who have been in the gym for a longer time have done, and that will put an excessive strain on your muscle and that will cause that muscle sprain. So preparing yourself before you engage in that extraneous physical activity is significantly better. Okay, great advice, great question, Daniel. Thank you for joining us. We are all out of time, so I wanna thank everybody for joining us and for the great questions. I wanna thank you, Dr. Dr. Dixon, for participating. Thank you. This channel later today, and we'll continue to monitor for questions for a while. So keep them coming if you have them. In the meantime, have a wonderful day.